welcome to lecture 17. Um, so we'll continue talking about the electromagnetic properties. So in this lecture, we'll primarily talk about the polarization and we'll summarize the magnetization, polarization, and conduction together. Um, polarization of single material can be divided into several scale and at atomic scale the electron cloud can displace in response to the electric field so you can see that when the electric field is applied then the, each atom can develop as a di dipole and call this a dipole moment and this dipole moment is z times e naught times t when it's the single atom. And it's called the electronic polarization. And the resonance frequency for this kind of a polarization is very high and it's in the uh, UV, the ultraviolet uh, the frequency of the wavelengths. And uh, in terms of the frequency, it tends to 16 Hz. Um, at a bigger scale, when you look at the molecule, um, for example, the ionic bonding, but the uh, ions bonded together, then the relative displacement of atoms in a molecule can cause the resonance too. Like uh, uh, two ions connected to, uh, with the spring, and it's called the ionic polarization. And both electronic polarization and the ionic polarization shows the resonance behavior. And the ionic polarization it occurs at around like 10 to the 13 hertz, and it's in the uh, infrared uh, region. And the last one is the polarization of a molecule. So if it's nonpolar, like um, what is it? This one, CCl4 or CO2, then it doesn't show any orienta orientation of polarization. But when it's dipole, uh, when it, it has a polarity like a highly polar molecule like water then it will cause show the orientational polarization as it rotates in response to the external electric field so and uh, this kind of electric uh, the polarization can occur uh, when the external field is applied but at the same time if the temperature is, is high then the molecule will like to move randomly. It's called a thermal agitation. So as the temperature increases, the randomness or the random movement gets the tendency gets higher. So agitation level increases. So the depolarizability decreases. So here, if the alpha is the polarizability, is inversely proportional to the, the temperature. Um, this kind of polarization, uh, orientation of polarization, is due to the um, molecule reorientation, and uh, it, it causes the relaxation behavior. So when the external field is released, then the, the molecule will be released, and uh, it will be randomly oriented. So then uh, the kappa prime is the uh, real permittivity and when the frequency is really high the real permittivity will be 1 so basically it's the same with the vacuum space but as the frequency decreases it, the electron electronic electronic polarization occurs at around like a UV region and it will show like this kind of a resonance behavior and in the imaginary part, you have a bell-shaped curve like this, very sharp. And as the also the frequency decreases, then the ionic resonance occurs. And with this, and at the microwave wavelength region, and the orientational polarization occurs. And this cause. So as the frequency decreases the real permittivity increases huh? as the prime decreases as the frequency decreases
because the uh, polarization ability adds up like, uh, for each scale. So if it's just a uh, uh, frozen water, then it will not show any uh, orientation of polarization because the water molecules are bounded and it's kind of uh, locked up by the neighboring molecules, water molecule. So the kappa prime is at around like three. And rock is the same. And the polymer or like non-polar material is at around three to four. But because the water is highly a uh, highly polar molecule, it shows the orientation of polarization at a greater uh, you know, great extent, so that the uh, real permittivity, kappa prime, is at around 70 to 80. Some like polar organic fluid, like benzene or like some toluene, that kind of material also shows some polarizability. And so that's gonna be around like 20, like 15 or 30. So in the real uh, imaginary permittivity, or because of this relaxation uh, behavior, it shows the uh, bell-shaped curve. And as the frequency gets much smaller, this is around like giga gigahertz uh, region. Then the, the ohmic loss, or like what you call the conduction. Contribute at the low frequency so that the um, this effective permittivity increases with this kind of equation. But when you look at the only the, uh, the pure imaginary permittivity, it's gonna be like zero. Yeah. Um, so again, um, at a very like high frequency, um, this here tau is called a relaxation time. And this tau is uh, one over frequency omega. Um, then uh, ionic, uh, the electronic polarization with the resonance reveals, and uh, at the the lower frequency, um, the ionic polarization manifest, and uh, the microwave region and the orientational polarization uh, prevails. So again, um, this is just another summary, electronic polarization and ionic polarization, uh, if we read it together, when an alternating electric field is applied, the negative electron cloud is displaced with respect to the positive core, rendering a polarized medium, and the dipole moment is equal to the total charge multipl multiplied by the displacement d. And in the ion polarization, an external field causes the relative displacement of the atoms in a molecule, rendering a polarized molecule. Ion polarization manifests as a, res a resonance phenomena at infrared frequencies and is not sensitive to temperature. And the uh, uh, orientation of polarization is uh, relevant to our study uh, because it's in the uh, uh, gigahertz region. When the center of the negative charge does not coincide with the center of positive charge, the molecule is polar. Uh, such is the case in water. In fluid, the, in the absence of a field, dipoles are randomly oriented due to the thermal agitation. However, when the external field E is applied, dipoles become aligned in the direction of uh, parallel to the direction of the uh, applied field while the thermal agitation tends to oppose alignment. So always the uh, like thermal agitation of batch um, uh, try to increase the entropy, the randomness, and the uh, electric field wants to align everything in, in line. And these are like, uh, relaxation phenomena, and the divide relaxation time is depending on the uh, molecule size and the temperature. So polarization is proportional to the electric field E, but not necessarily in phase, so it shows the amplitude and phase vary with in frequency, so frequency dependence. And then it's expressed with, expressed with a complex permittivity, kappa asterisk, kappa star. 
uh, polarization P is equivalent to the vectorial sum of ND, the number of like, dipoles times the elementary dipole moment, UD, in unit volume. Um, if it's resonance behavior, this is the equation to express it with the, you know, I think that this is very similar to what we've seen in what a uh, single degree of freedom system. And this is the relaxation uh, behavior. And this is what we've seen for the uh, uh, P wave and S wave elastic wave propagation. Um, single phase, yeah, uh, that's what we talked about. And if we plot it with the, um, the previous equation, if it's resonance, you have this kind of a sharp uh, peak a positive peak and a negative peak in the real value and a positive peak in the, um, the imaginary value. If it's rel a relaxation, it shows a like, gradual decrease over a relaxation frequency with a bell-shaped attenuation at the uh, imaginary value. Um, and there are some other models that uh, consider the interfacial polarization. It's called a Maxwell Wagner spatial polarization, and we're going to talk about this one for uh, in terms of the clay. So this is for the layered material. So if you have like clay and water, clay particle and water, this kind of alignment, then the this Maxwell Wagner model uh, applies well. So uh, in the mixture case, low space surface inclusion. So in this case. Um, we can think of like sand. So sand particles mix with water. In the presence of the second component, which is uh, like, like quartz or the sand particle, cause an additional polarization mechanism that tends to manifest a lower frequency. So layered, uh, you know, can be parallel to the field, or it could be a uh, you know, perpendicular to the field. In this case, it's called the Maxwell relaxation, and uh, um. This will be the one uh, special polarization, uh, host with inclusions, the Wagner relaxation, and semi permeable membrane. And clay is assumed negatively charged. So these are the clays that's negatively charged. So depending on the, uh, like, uh, the geometry or like mixture type, um, their special distribution. Um, the behavior can be a little bit different, and uh, that can be also captured in the many different mixture theory. Uh, main polarization mechanism in mixtures is spatial polarization, evident as a relaxation response to at a radio frequency. Um, in quasi dy format, um, you have one more term. So, okay. so this is the just um, divide relaxation, normal one, and uh, we have one more term called the equivalent conductivity. So before it was like just like this, and the here is decreases like this, and and because of this um, um, effective conductivity term, the DC or the AC conductivity term, the loss term in imaginary permittivity becomes higher. So the effective permittivity, the image value of the K asterisk, is kappa double prime plus this conductivity divided by the uh, this frequency. So as the frequency decreases, this portion gets increases. So that's why the you you have an increase in uh, kappa double prime effective. Uh, effective image permittivity increases as the frequency decreases and the effective permittivity, uh, imaginary permittivity includes polarization losses and the conduction losses. And conduction losses the this part. Um, so in layered media, uh, when the interface between two components is parallel, then the like this parallel model like this, no special polarization. Uh, when the interface is uh, normal to the field, there's a series model and it's called the maximum relaxation. So again, um, like the mixture theory that we talked about in the 
uh, conduction and also its magnetic permeability can be also applied to this kind of permittivity model. Um, in clay, in wet clay, uh, polarization is um, the clay, uh, let's look at the polarization of the clay material. So then you have a clay particle and there are some potassium that's attached on the clay particle at a very close proximity to the clay surface and it's called a stone layer polarization. So this potassium or some cation can move only by small amount when the field is applied. And this is the minus and plus plus plus. So this will move a little bit to the negative electrode or node. And it's called the ionic polarization. <clears throat> so it's similar to the ionic polarization in the single molecule. Um, at low frequency, this movement does not contribute to conduction, but at high frequency, this can contribute. And the second one is the absorbed water polarization. So when you have absorbed water here, then this can rotate and uh, in response to the electric field and it's the relaxation. So here, ionic polarization shows the resonance, but this one shows the relaxation because the water will rotate and then it will become more freely uh, randomly oriented. So water molecule is spinning and this is sent to two to three mono layers uh, from here. So when, if this is the water layer, then the uh, water molecule size, then the one, two, and three up to this part. Um, this absorbed water molecule polarization uh, occurs. And and relaxation frequency of this kind of absorbed water polarizability is the same with the free water. But polarizability is much less than the free water. So the that means that the water molecule, the mass is the same, whether it's absorbed or it's like free, free, surf, free space, huh? further from the, further away from the surface. Huh? So that the relaxation time or the, the time taken to be aligned is the same, but the polarizability, like how much they can be um, rotate, is different, huh? which would be much less than the free water. And the last one is the double layer polarization. Now that the, you have not the absorbed water, absorbed water is here, right? So not the one, um, kind of a little bit further away here with some cation. And this can polarize in response to the, um, the electric field. And the relaxation frequency is in the kilohertz to megahertz. So then when you plot it from electronic, um, here we one and as our frequency decreases, you get the electronic polarization and ionic polarization or stone layer polarization and absorbed water polarization that's in around like 10 gigahertz. And here it's about kilohertz to megahertz and special polarization. Uh, so because of that, you get the higher permittivity value than uh, higher than the water. And when you look at the um, imaginary effective permittivity, also peak, like bell shape and another bell shape for the resonance and another bell shape for the uh, relaxation. And here, one more bell shape for the relaxation. And the DC or the effective conductivity, so this is the AC conductivity. AC conductivity uh, kind of adds up from the DC conductivity because of this um, imaginary permittivity, right? uh, polarization loss. This part is. Part. So, summary again, um, 
you know, it shows the uh, better picture for the real and the image permittivity with the frequency. Um, here is the one, almost one, and, and UV is the electronic polarization and stone layer polarization at around like 10 to 12, and the orientation of polarization of the water layer, water polarization at around like 10 gigahertz, and space double layer polarization at around like uh, 10 hertz, 10 kilohertz to uh, megahertz, uh, 10 megahertz. Um, you can uh, read it through the so stone layer polarization and optical water polarization and double layer polarization. And here see another case, the double layer, still the double layer polarization, but the low particle concentration in when the uh, in electrolyte. So when there's uh, many cations and anions in free water. So then polarization in electrolyte is hindered because the displaced ions are replaced by the diffusion of the ions into and out of the bulk solution. So when the double layer becomes polarized like this, then the, this part is locally loses its electric neutrality, right? Because of the negative charge. So then the, uh, the cations around it will will be refilled com to compensate the uh, negative charge on the surface. So this kind of a like, uh, double layer polarization is hindered in uh, high ion concentration fluid. The pore fluid is highly uh, saline. And also when the particle, so the porosity is low, so now the uh, particle concentration is high so that uh, they are almost touching each other. And even though it gets polarized like this, then the surface conduction will contribute to the uh, ion balance. So there will be some like, cation hopping so that the uh, double layer polarization will be also hindered. Um, electromagnetic properties of the matter are interrelated um, through the uh, emission component of the permittivity and permeability, which are on the same plane as the conductivity. Um, so these are almost like the summary. Uh, polarization involves charges with their own inertia, and because the inertia forces prevail in dynamic system at high frequency, and then like, it shows the relaxation behavior. And polarization from different mechanisms accumulates towards the low frequency as a result. The real permittivity increases with the decreasing frequency. As the excitation frequency approaches the critical frequency or relaxation frequency or resonant frequency, the polarization of the medium lags behind the, the applied field. This phase lag manifests it loses in losses and is captured in the imaginary part. The effective imaginary permittivity includes the polarization loss, a double prime, and the conduction loss, the ohming loss, this part. These losses can be expressed in terms of the effective AC conductivity or effective imaginary conductivity. Uh, so when you measure the imaginary part, it's going to be always you know, together because they are in phase. That's what it's saying in here. The contribution of ohmic conduction to the effective imaginary permittivity decreases with increasing uh, frequency. So I think we've seen that here. Yeah, here, the conduction part uh, does not contribute that much as the frequency increases to around like, uh, 100 hertz. So when you when you're in this range megahertz or kilohertz, the ionic concentration doesn't matter that much. So that's why we can use the dielectric constant to um, assess and estimate the water content. If the water content, if the pore fluid is very saline, then it will be also affected by that uh, the uh, permittivity or the dielectric constant will be affected by the electrolyte. But when it's the high frequency, then the uh, relatively it's free from that effect. 
So each polarization mechanism has a characteristic time scale and a characteristic special scale, which relates to the size of the polarizing unit. The smaller the mass, the higher the characteristic frequency. Yep. Uh, thank you for listening.